Sometimes we see impact in very straightforward numbers. For example, a recent media campaign on the Kenya-Tanzania border led to the arrest of 57 people after 500 girls were cut in the first week of the 2021 December holidays. As activists, we just started hearing reports that FGM is happening. It forced us to take some videos of the procession, to have evidence, to convince the administration and even the police that actually the cutting were going on. It was because of the help of the media. We communicated with Kipanoia, Jeremiah, and then Jeremiah helped us in ensuring that we were able to use radio, local radio, to have a campaign, a hashtag stop Korea mass FGM. It was really a challenging time. But as local campaigners, we had to mobilize ourselves so fast to do a rapid response within the villages and also through media. We set up a rescue center for girls running away from their homes. Then the elders got on board. <laughs> On Wednesday the 16th of March, these elders came to the radio station to denounce FGM on air. It was a very interactive session and a lot of people were calling in, a lot of text, like they, they never stopped, like finished reading the text. We had the chairman who is leading the other four clans. So I think that was important because we were with the right people there. When having the declaration and I tried to interview one elder to get his views about the FGM and about the declaration and, and he's told me, you know, there's nothing I'm going to add because the elder who concludes has already spoken, so I'm not, I'm not going to talk about after him. And to me, I, I really, I found that really remarkable and amazing because it already shows that there's a way that they follow and some respect. Several listeners called in to confirm that thanks to hearing their elders condemning FGM, they too would stop the practice. This was the immediate impact of just the first of bi-weekly shows that will run till mid-April. Having the end FGM live sessions whereby we could give updates and we could even map villages that were happening. I'm glad that because of media, the government accepted, the administration and the police accepted. Action was now taken because of the media campaigns. Some communities and parents still keen on female genital mutilation for their daughters. This young girl with a lollipop in her mouth is on her way to undergo the banned ritual. We could use Twitter as well because we know that national government uh, institutions are really vibrant on Twitter. We could tag them and then we could see their responses. We could see them now even calling their juniors that are now here in Kuria. What is happening? Can you give us updates? Then on the NFGM live conversation we were having every day, we were planning. Then there was also anti-FGM board, the county commissioner, who is also in charge of the security of the whole county here, including Kuria. So he could also tell us what actually the police were doing under his capacity in ensuring that there's no more cutting that were happening. It was really overwhelming. And this is the first time that we rescued so many. By the end of December, I think we had 293 girls who we rescued and uh, were free, did not underwent FGM. If it was not this well-coordinated media campaign, then we could not get an opportunity to rescue these 293. So this really brought a very big impact. 57 perpetrators are apprehended right now, waiting for court processes. We've seen six successful cases that have been already prosecuted. Two perpetrators have been jailed for three years, and then the other remaining four have been also jailed for six years. So the 52 are still waiting for court cases. That is 29th of April 2022. So uh, it is because of media that we saw responses. Having the top clan uh, council of elders speaking in the radio, you know, denouncing FGM. To me, that's just a revolution and a change that is coming. It's going to take some years, but I think we're in the right track.